I just got a box of succulents from Mountain Crest Gardens and I have no idea what's inside, but I am super excited to find out. Ooh. First up, we have a very delicate plant. This is one of the trickiest plants to ship without it getting damaged, and it looks amazing. This is an Aeonium kiwi, I'm assuming, or something very, very similar. But look how hot pink these edges are. They are so pretty and very, very little bruising, which I'm really surprised by. Normally with this, you just expect that you're gonna have black spots all over the place and it's gonna look really beat up, but this came out looking amazing. All right, I was hoping this one came with a name tag because it is familiar to me, but I couldn't remember for sure exactly what it's called. Oscularia deltoides. It looks a lot like typical ice plants. You can see it has these really hot pink tips on the end, almost like little teeth. I guess hot pink is the color of this package so far. I am really excited about this one. This is really unique texture and shape for sure. Now, as far as what is in this package, they asked me if I wanted anything in particular. So I threw out a few different species, but just said anything that's colorful or unique, I am open to getting. They did include one and I can see a little peek of it right here that I am thrilled to have in my collection. See if you can guess it. So exciting. Wow, this looks so good. If you haven't already guessed, this is String of Turtles and it's definitely a unique plant. It's in the Peperomia family. And this is one that really likes to stay in a shallow pot. So I'm excited to give this one a go. I also wanna try propagating it from little cuttings. Oh, I know this one. All right, here we have bear paws. And with these, it's really normal for them to have dirt all over them when they arrive in shipping. It's pretty much inevitable if you have stuff shipped to you in pots with soil, but this will come off really quick with just a little blower. It's actually been a while since I have had bear paws in my collection, so it'll be fun to have it back. This one was on my request list. This is Dancing Bones Cactus. Not really a cactus, but it is really cute. A really unique texture and kind of pattern to it. I'm really excited to try this one both on its own and maybe even split some off and put it in an arrangement. I like using plants like this in arrangements because they fill in the gaps so nicely. Whereas with Echeveria or even like that Aeonium at the beginning, they have such hard edges and this can just flow right around those and fill in very nicely. Ooh. Some variegation here. I think this is, yeah, Crassula. Campfire. So normally this plant, Crassula capitella campfire, is bright red orange on the edges. So this variegated version is interesting because it's white and green and then this hot pink. There really is a lot of hot pink in this order. I love it. This is one I requested as well. This is my kid's favorite plant. It is panda plant. I just love the fuzzy texture and it has such cool patterns. And then the grayish blue coloring is so pretty. This one is another one I requested. I actually had one from them a few years ago. So this is a type of Senecio and it just is really cool. It has like kind of a shimmery texture to it, almost like there's a film or like cobwebs on it, but flat cobwebs. Here you can see a little bit of it kind of scraped off, but it just, it's really cool. Very, very different texture than most succulents, which are smooth or they have that farina. This one just has a texture all of its own. I love this plant. Anacampseros, yeah, it's a long one. I just call it sunrise. If someone wants to pronounce that for me, go for it, but 
I just call it sunrise and I love this one. It's interesting because sunrise is usually like hot pink. Again, we're going with that theme here. This has a lot of dark colors, which reminds me of another variety of it, but I can tell that it is definitely a sunrise just from these bright pink tips. If you look closely here, you can see some little white threads or strands on it. This is actually a natural part of the plant. A lot of people see it and worry that it's mealybugs or some other kind of problem. But if you do see it on this particular plant, it is normal. So you don't have anything to worry about. I found that the quantity of the little strands is really inconsistent. Some plants I've had get a lot of the stringiness and some just have a little like this one. I am excited to have this one. Ooh, got some more pinks. Pink must be a color that is showing up in a lot of the plants right now. This is a variegated string of buttons. It is really cool. Look at those bright pink colors. And then we've got a little bloom going here. And it's interesting, right? So this one is variegated, you can see that, but look how this one's pink and this one is mostly just white. I'm excited to see as this continues to grow if they stay that way or if this one will get a little bit more pink to it as it's under the grow lights, or if this one will lose some of the pink and shift back to more of just the white and green. I just noticed that there is a heat pack right here. It is still getting down into the 40s and 30s here in Utah, so they put that in just as an extra precaution. Ooh, this is a good one. I do not have a good history with black succulents, especially Black Knight and Black Prince, but I am very excited to give this another go. Also, someone pointed out to me once, if you're wondering if your succulent is a Black Prince or a Black Knight, you just look at the shape of the leaves. A knight would have a sword, so these leaves are gonna be long and skinny. A prince would have a shield, so an Echeveria Black Prince is going to have wider leaves at the top, and then it'll come down narrow at the bottom. Wish me luck. These have not lasted long for me, but I really would like to keep one and have it stay alive for a long time. I swear that if you just mention the word water around these too often, they will rot. This was one I requested also. I had a sedum clavatum early, early on in my succulent growing days, and I'm not sure what happened to it, but I have not added one since, and so I'm excited to try this again. And you can see this one actually has a little flower also. It looks like this might be trying to flower too but I do have one good full rosette here, so we should be good to plant it up and let it grow. I see some Echeverias down here. What have we got? There are so many colorful hybrids of Echeverias lately, and so it's important that if you want to know the name of it and keep its ID, write it down. For me, all of these will be going into the Succulent Tracker app, and this one will get its name added in. I love how this has blues, kind of teal and purple, and then that beautiful pink tip. Oh, I love this one. If you want a really great propagating succulent, Graptocetum Glow is amazing. I am probably not gonna propagate this from leaves right now. I'm gonna let it grow bigger, but this is one that will grow so easily from leaves and so easily from cuttings. And it's cute and little and red. So what's not to love? This one is almost overflowing out of its pot. I love the little baby here. We've got a little bloom. And I don't know what variety it is, but it looks really cool. And a classic Echeveria Pearl von Nuremberg. Classic purple beauty. This is one of the most common Echeverias, at least it was before we started getting so many hybrids. But it is one that I will always love. It just has beautiful purple color to it and then those bright pink edges. Pretty sure I know what this one is too. See if you can ID it before I show it to you. So pretty. Oh, this is actually not what I thought it was. I was gonna say it's Echeveria Neon Breakers, but it is the parent plant to Neon Breakers, Shaviana. Look how gorgeous that is. Now, because it's so small, it's a little bit harder to tell apart but as I look at it and knowing what it is, I can see that the leaves on this are a little bit whiter and it's also a little bit more purple than Neon Breakers tends to be. All right, here's the very last one. Another Echeveria and lovely purples and pinks. Oh, I actually guessed it. I was gonna say it and then I decided I didn't wanna be wrong. Should have said it. Echeveria Orion. 
This is one I've actually had my eye on too, so I'm excited to have it. It's purple like a lot of the other Echeveris that I just showed you, but it has a lot thicker leaves than Pearl von Nuremberg. Here they all are. I am so excited about this group. There's going to be a lot of fun arrangements to be made, but I think initially I'm actually going to pot them all up individually or mostly individually. I might combine a couple of them, but for now, I don't know exactly what I want to do with them, but I do want to get them into gritty soil because that's what I'm used to. And especially with all these Echeverias and that Black Knight, especially, I want to make sure they are in a really well draining soil so that I don't overwater them. I know I want to make at least one arrangement with this little dancing bones. So I'm thinking to pair it with this Echeveria and I think I'm going to add in these Graptocetum Alpenglow. I like the color combinations here. We've kind of got the blue, the reddish orange, purples and greens kind of all together next to each other. And I can split these up and kind of spread them around to make the arrangement a little bit more interesting. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove all of this soil. Now, a lot of times when I'm repotting succulents, I'm not too concerned about keeping the roots. Roots help everything transplant a little bit easier, but when I'm working with arrangements, I always like to keep as much of the roots as possible because I feel like it helps the arrangement just thrive a lot better from the beginning. I haven't had this happen just yet, but if you're working with this Graptocetum Alpenglow, it's very common for some of these lower leaves to fall off. And if they're plump, you can go ahead and propagate them. I'm actually gonna pull this leaf off because it's kind of on its own down at the bottom. All right, so I've got those three out. Okay, I'm going to put the dancing bones into the arrangement first. I think this will propagate that tiny little thing. I'm gonna put it in one of my propagation trays and see what happens. With the dancing bones, I wanna keep it really clumped together. I am gonna loosen up the soil, but then I'm gonna put it straight into the arrangement so that it doesn't fall apart. It's also a lot harder to get soil off of these roots on these kind of stringy plants where there's just a bunch of little pieces. So I am hoping that they'll wash away kind of early on. This is one that can tolerate a little bit more water than most, so I'm not super worried about it, but that looks pretty good. There's not a ton on there. All right, so now I've got my little pot in here and I think it needs a little bit more soil. I don't want this to be very far down below the rim of the pot. You end up getting more rot that way. So I try and have the soil right along the top of the roots as much as possible. All right, so now that I have them all kind of in place, then comes the fun part, trying to get the soil in around all these plants, and getting it to hold. Now, if you've watched people make succulent arrangements before with more organic soil and keeping some of that original soil on, it's definitely easier to keep things in place, but I have just found that that soil is too organic for me. It stores too much water and I really need something grittier. You have to just figure out how to kind of hold on to everything, keep it in place, and then put the soil around it and pack it down. I am being really picky here, but the dancing bones looked like it was laying flat instead of standing up, and I want it to look like it's standing up. So I'm kind of pulling it out, and I'm gonna try and stick the soil in to prop it up a little more. This little tool comes super handy for getting soil kind of in between some of these succulents and pressing it in and pressing it down, just helping things to get stuck in place. 
Now, we just had a really great workshop in the Succulent Lovers Club a little bit ago where Terry from Out of the Box Planters taught us how to make succulent arrangements. And she had so many great ideas. One of the things that she said is you want to have the thriller, filler, and spiller. And I don't know if mine quite does that, although the dancing bones could be the spiller. But her business is Out of the Box Planters. And I was just thinking it's kind of ironic because I'm literally planting into a box. But I love this combination of plants and colors. It's just really pretty. You've got the nice smooth textures and then this funky dancing bones texture. Now I do have a bunch of soil left on top of this Echeveria. So there's a couple ways to get rid of it. I could just go in with tweezers and pick out these pieces because they're pretty big. Um, I'm gonna try using a blower and see if that helps. You could also use a brush. That did not quite work for some of these heavier little rocks. So I'm just gonna pick them off with some tweezers. All right, and there we have it all potted up. For my string of turtles, I wanted something really shallow. So I have this bulb terracotta planter that I got a while ago, and I'm gonna put it in that. It's maybe a little bit big for this size of plant, but because it's shallow, I think this will grow quite quickly and it should spread out and fill in the rest of the pot. All right, these roots, or at least the soil, is just completely falling off. The roots are not very deep, which is typical for this type of plant. Most string of plants don't get super deep roots. They tend to stay fairly shallow, and they tend to like staying very shallow. Now, I'm having a hard time because there's a bunch of little pieces that are coming off, and I want to save all of them because string of turtles is not what I've had before, and so, of course, I want to propagate as much as I can. Um, I'm probably gonna come back in when I'm done here and just pick up those pieces. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm not worried about having a little bit of more organic soil on top of this. Okay, just trying to kind of nestle the roots down into this soil. And then I'm not going to have it trail right now. I'm gonna try and keep everything in to the top of the pot. And the reason for that is string of turtles, string of hearts, string of pearls, all of those, they tend to do better if they have a really tight cluster of leaves and stems and roots up here at the top. And so I wanna keep all of these in because they will start to root if they're touching the soil up here. And that will just help the plant get even more established. All right, there we have the string of turtles. As I mentioned, I'm gonna pot up the rest of these individually. I personally find that I like having my succulents individually potted better than in arrangements. They tend to do better for me. And I think part of it is each succulent has slightly different care needs. And if they're not like perfectly matched, a lot of times one succulent will grow faster than the other, or one succulent will need more water than another. And even though I can try to kind of spot water or adapt or pull one out if it's struggling. I find it's just easier if they're all potted individually. And then you can just plant them next to each other and it looks like an arrangement even though they're all individually potted. Now this Black Prince has quite a bit of roots but they're not very deep. So I'm filling the pot most of the way with soil, putting the plant in and then I'll just cover those roots and press down a little bit to just make sure everything is in and nice and compact. Ta-da! These don't actually have a ton of roots, so I think I'm gonna pull off the lower leaves on most of them, and that way I have a little bit more stem to work with. I'm gonna have to be careful on this one because the roots are coming right at the bottom of that leaf. There's those variegated Crassula perforata.
I decided to put this one in a little bit bigger pot because it already has two large rosettes and a third one coming on here. So I think it needs a little bit more space. So this actually looks like a little cutting, it has some roots growing on the end, and it definitely looks like a flower is starting here. But rather than pot it up with the bigger plant, I'm actually gonna put this in my propagation tray and let it root on its own, and then repot it once it gets a little bit bigger. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but there are actually two little babies starting to grow. One right here, and one right here. Just gotta admire this one more time. I love these colors and textures. Here we go, everything all potted up. This was a lot. And I still need to put it into the Succulent Tracker app. And I also need to plant up all these little propagations too. So there's a lot to do still, but that's the end of the potting and unboxing for now.